Hey, welcome. Welcome to Shest College Humanities 4 Film Studies. It is the last day of August. Fires are getting a little better. The sky is clearing a bit. and uh, But we're not out of the 100 degrees heat for quite some time. Although it's only a cool 100 degrees today, but in three days it's going to be 111. Yahoo! Anyway, I hope you guys are staying cool and staying safe and putting your face mask on when you need them and um, keeping your social distance the whole nine yards until this horrible mess is over. Um, today, um, I'm going to talk about the era of films where sound comes in. Um, each... Each week, I'm going to try to do a decade or so in this history of cinema, where we just did our first couple of decades, actually, with the silent era, uh, which would be the beginning of, beginning of films in early 1900s. Choose the films I had you watch and do your first two papers on, the Charlie Chaplin and, and uh, Buster Keaton films. Still no sound yet silent films, and what's happening in the 20s is we've come out of war, to put, to put it in historical perspective, which is really important to understand these, these movements, um, we've just come out of World War I, and it was, they called it the war to end all wars, didn't quite manage that one, but they were hopeful. Uh, carnage of the highest level. Modern warfare started. Um, the old warfare styles were no longer because now we had automation. We had cars and tanks and airplanes. And we had different kind of weapons. And the carnage was heavy and thick. And it was a type of warfare that we're never going to fight again. Trench warfare. Maybe you've seen the film 1917. I suggest you just check it out. Um, it looks like they really filmed it in the trenches. And those trenches were miserable, folks. And uh, they just slaughtered a lot of young guys uh, on both sides, all sides. The French... German, Americans, British, thousands and thousands and thousands of young men slaughtered. And that was supposed to stop all wars. Of course, later on, Hitler was still lost that war. He was a mere corporal in that war. And he was still angry about losing that war. And that's what started his rise to fame and power in the Third Reich. That comes in later, though, and I'll talk about that later when we get into the World War II years. But right now, we're in the sound era. It's just starting. They say the first sound uh, film was 1927, Jazz Singer. There was some inroads into sound a little bit before that. Tiny uh, periods of sound in, the, in a silent movie. Uh, so it's not technically the first, but it's the, it's the recognized first film of the sound era. It's uh, a story about a, a Jewish son of a Jewish rabbi who wants to be a jazz singer. And it's looked, it's looked down on. It's frowned upon. It's not a dignified occupation. And so uh, actually most of the film, you can watch it. It's out there on YouTube. Most of the film is silent, but there is songs. He sings songs, and those are done live uh, with actually Al Jolson is actually singing. Now, he, this guy named Al Jolson started this film, and he was a big, big, big vaudeville star of stage in those days. If you know what vaudeville is, it was a, it was a sort of a, a stage presentation. He was a comedian, singer. People just loved him. He was a pretty big star. And then he made this movie and made him a huge star. And uh, 
But when you look at him, you think, why him? He's not necessarily handsome, tall, leaning, leading man type, but he had star power, and that's all that counted. Um, actually, Al Jolson is really famous for performing in what they call blackface, which is where white performers would paint their faces black like they're African-American, and they would sing in an and dance in an exaggerated way in a way they're making fun of African-Americans, but that's what they did in those days. That was good entertainment before it was labeled racist, um, white racism, but it wasn't in those days. Lots of people performed in blackface, and he was one of the most famous ones, but not in this movie. Um, so the 20s, the end of legal liquor it was a huge, huge phenomenon. Prohibition, it was called. And um, alcohol was illegal. And that gave rise to gangsters in America uh, like never before. Illegal bootleggers, they called them. Distilling liquors because the masses still want to drink. They want to drink like never before. And uh, so, uh, in the meantime, there was the rise of gangsters, and Hollywood was packing them in at the theaters with these silent films, like the ones I asked you to watch, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, The Three Comedians, Harold Lloyd. These are major, major films with huge that made these people stars and made them a lot of money. People wanted to see happy things. Uh, other film stars... Douglas Fairbanks Sr., Mary Pickford, all started in these eras, and they became hugely influential. The first wave, of, you would call a movie star, uh, because the camera techniques were different, or changing now. The camera could do a close-up, and we could see their real emotions. We could see their faces clearly. Now, all of a sudden, we could hear them. So the country was in an upswing. We'd survived World War I. Nobody wanted to go back to war again. And so it, and, but the downside was prohibition. They kind of, they kind of put a kibosh on the party. Um, in the meantime, 1919 or so, women's suffrage, uh, women got the right to vote. Believe it or not, folks, women couldn't vote in this country until 1919. Uh, and uh, that is another big stepping stone of this decade of kind of decadence uh, that was known as the Roaring Twenties. And it was roaring because it was a big party. People were happy. They were dancing like crazy. Women, believe it or not, cut their hair. And they started smoking cigarettes and drinking booze with the boys, and they weren't married, and they were dancing like there's no tomorrow. And there was movie stars that came out of this. Um, uh, Louise Brooks is the classic example of a flapper girl, and uh, if you ever get a chance to see a movie called Pandora Box, it's, if it's out there, uh, you'll see how modern she is. She's literally... Almost like the first punk rock girl, if you guys know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, or goth girl, even. Um, very, very modern from the 1920s. Her, her attitudes, her, her film, very feminist type of film. She's the lead. Uh, and the stories around her and her uh, kind of wanton ways. And it was a huge, huge hit. So Hollywood was making some amazing films that were very... Uh, adult. And um, and then when sound came in, things really started jumping. I'm not going to talk about it today. I'll talk about it the next time I see you guys. But right now, we really don't have, Hollywood that is, doesn't have what they call censorship. And the Catholic Church is not happy, folks. They're a very, very powerful political entity. And they had a lot of power in those days, not so much now, uh, where they could threaten uh, to pull their business. And they haven't done that yet, but they didn't like what they're seeing in these Hollywood movies because 
you would uh, see a nude Gloria Swanson swimming. Um, you would see women having sex. Not, guys, this isn't porn, so don't get that excited. But um, you would they would intimate that they're going to have sex out of marriage. Uh, and so they had these films, very adult, the content as well. When I say adult, I'm not talking about uh, adult films like uh, X-rated films. I'm talking about the content, emotionally adult. They're talking about real problems, not made up Hollywood entertaining type of frivolity. They, there became some serious films came out of these eras. One of them is the great King Vidor is the crowd about a guy who um, wants to raise up out of the crowd. He wants to do anything he can. He doesn't want to be a part of the crowd. He wants to be special, but you watch this movie and it's so brilliant and you can see him wanting to be special is not that easy. Uh, he, it's hard to rise above the crowd and uh, it's a brilliant, brilliant film and then it's nothing full of tragedy and heartache, that film and redemption and salvation at the end so it ends up good there was so many other films in that era I wish we could watch um, some of them in class we can't um, and I'm telling you the content was hopeful, adult, mature. These films weren't really for kids, and they were making money at the box office. Um, film is changing on a huge scale. Not only is this film changing, how they're making films, uh, and the technology is changing quickly, the content is really growing up. And people want to see more, better, more content. Um, and so in the 1920s, film was, was big business. But no fun allowed because no booze. So later on, I'm going to talk about this next time. Each decade, the films reflect what's going on in the culture. That's how you, that's how we judge who we are, is by the art we make during the time, period of time we're living through. Like right now, we're all living through this pandemic, and there's a lot of interesting art happening. Hasn't maybe come out yet, but people are starting to reinvent themselves. How do you make a film in a pan, during a pandemic? How do you do it to keep people safe? Well, they're figuring it out. How do you do a play? stage play when you can't have an audience <clears throat> well they're figuring it out we're doing zoom zoom has become our life will it replace live theater probably not hopefully in the next year we'll have live venue uh, music art plays films but they are starting to open up a few things but it's going to be dangerous we don't know what's going to happen So art is changing. Art was changing huge. Cinema was changing huge in the 1920s. Um, the silent film actors actually could make very good money. Uh, the, you know, maybe not by today's standards, but my standards, I'd like to make this money now. They can make five, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars a week. That's pretty good. Uh, it's better than working at Starbucks. Um, and so they're getting powerful, the actors. Uh, they're getting more say in their own films. Um, because of the success of the era that they're living in. Now, what's going to creep up on them and change the everything? Once again, two things. The main thing is the stock market crash in 1929, and that's going to bust the bubble for sure. The second thing is they stopped prohibition. They made booze legal again. Now what 
what that did, and I'll talk about that in the next class, it gave rise to a certain type of film, gangster films. First time we ever had those. And uh, talk about gangster films on Wednesday, not today. I uh, just want to hit the sound thing early so you can get um, used to sound all of a sudden. Now, when they first started recording sound, it was pretty primitive. That's why early, early sound movies look very static in the camera movements because they didn't have the ability to move the microphone around. It was usually planted or hidden somewhere on the set. And it was known as flower pot acting because usually there'd be a table or something. Uh, they're sitting at the table, two people talking, and there's a flower pot sitting there. And guess where the microphone is hidden? That's right, in the flower pot. And so the actors, and you watch these films, they're speaking into the flower pot. They're not moving around the room because they can't hear the flower pot microphone can't pick them up if they go across the room. And so there's very little movement with the actors, very little movement, hardly any movement with the camera because they're stuck talking into the flower pot. And they made movies, they made a lot of films like that until they got a new system of booming the actor from above with a microphone that comes down on a big pole. And that changed everything again, where the actors could get up and move as long as the microphone doesn't come into the, the frame, which does often. If you guys ever want to make a film, you'll see what I mean. To this day, the boom is a big hassle um, with getting in the way. And you want to record the best sound you can. So the sound recording devices are big, honk and sh huge tape recorders, and it wasn't made for lightweight filming like we do nowadays. What happened during this time was after the silent films, they needed to build sound stages. That's, if anybody's ever been to Hollywood or ever heard of sound stages, that's why they're there. Uh, you could go down to the Universal Tour, you could go into a sound stage. Uh, there are huge airplane hangar sized uh, buildings that had soundproofing, thick soundproofing all over the walls. And that was to keep the noise out from outside the building while they're recording the movie inside. They weren't taping these films. The new early, early sound films weren't shooting in locations. They're on the sets. Because you can't go on location and try to tape live audio because there's too much noise. There's noise from cars, weather, planes flying over. Yes, even planes are flying over in 1928. Uh, it's just too much noise. And so they brought them into the sound stages and they staged films for many years in on sets built on these soundproof sound stages. Um, most, Holo most early Hollywood films are made that way. Thus, the sound stage. Because sound took over the visual medium. And in a lot of way, it it made for poorer cinema. Cinema, the camera can move in the silent era because they're not recording sound. The, uh, the director could direct the actors and tell them what to do because while they're filming, because there's no sound to pick the director's voice up. And so it's a really great way to make a film. It makes it a lot easier. It's very creative. All of a sudden, we have this sound contraption we have to deal with. So they built these sets on these huge stages. And the sound became more important than the visual. You know, and movies suffered for it. Early films, and you'll see it. I'm going to make you guys 
look at the documentary on Canopy again. Um, I'll assign that in a minute. Uh, it makes the staging really static because essentially the camera is on one actor or a two shot on two actors and they're talking at each other, but the camera doesn't move because they, they can't move because there's no way to record them. And so all of a sudden people are talking. Yes, people were happy to hear them talk, but they were missing out on one of the key to cinema is the visual imagery. That started changing when the technology started changing. But early sound stages, sound movies, not then, not quite yet. Okay, so now we got, we're coming out of Prohibition. Uh, we can drink booze again, and then the, we get slammed with the Wall Street crash, which put everybody, millions of people, just kind of like right now, we're going through with the pandemic, they put them out of work. And um, people lost their jobs by the millions. They lost their homes. Couldn't pay rent. It's very similar to what's going on right now. And I'll talk about the Depression era films the next time we meet. And it changes everything also. Okay, so your assignment right now, besides finish your essay on either the silent films I signed, the kid or the... Um, Sherlock Jr. by Buster Keaton. I heard there was a problem on the kid. For some reason, it took it off the module. I don't know why. So I, I put a I put a link up there to go watch it on YouTube on announcements. So hopefully, y'all got to see it. Um, I don't know why it disappeared off module. I have to figure that out. <clears throat> this technology we're using isn't perfect. Far from it. So um, you're going to watch, you're going to go into Canopy. You know how to do that now. We did it already on the first, I think, two parts of this documentary called The Story of Film by Mark Cousins. I'm going to sign another, uh, another segment, the sound segment, and watch that, and you can begin the discussion. Uh, I'll post all that. And in the discussion, discuss what you're saying. Discuss how what you're seeing in the documentary about early days of the Roaring Twenties, sound coming in, discuss, discuss what you're seeing. Simple as that. Um, there's no right or wrong in it. And then, re, re, then reply to two other students. I'll assign those later today uh, once I go in and find the link to the Canopy uh, videos. Make sure they're there. Anyway, that's it, folks. I haven't started your uh, grading your papers because I, I think they're due today, maybe. I'm still grading papers from other classes. I'll get to these papers pretty as fast as I can. Some people have asked me some questions that I thought I made clear, but evidently I didn't. Uh, someone, Many people are wondering what to write about. Well, I thought I explained it pretty good in the last lecture. And then in the uh, pages, I made... Pretty, pretty detailed what I'm looking for in these essays, critical essays. I'm not going to send another one until at the end of this week, so don't worry about one today uh, or tomorrow. Um, but I will be assigning another essay at the end of this week uh, on a sound film, whatever it is. I'll have to find one, something for you to look at. Anyway, um, and then we'll talk about the paper the next time I see you guys, which will be on Wednesday when I tape another one of these. So go on Canopy, find the story of film. I will post the link. And uh, that is it, folks. Go on and enjoy a movie. You know, every year when I do the science films, the young people in my class kind of dread it. They don't understand it. They don't get it. They're bored with it. It's dull to them. And But there's always somebody who, who contacts me a letter and said, you know, I think I'm going to watch a silent film on my own. <laughs> Not as an assignment, but actually on their own. So if I can reach anybody, silent films is the start of all cinema. And the stories they told then are still as relevant because nothing changes, folks. It's just the technology. 
we're still the same people. Uh, same issues. That doesn't change. So enjoy those, this, can, uh, this video, and um, I'll see you next time. Keep the faith and stay safe out there.